Hi guys, welcome to another video. This is the second in the Affinity Designer Tools series. So in today's video, we're going to go through the very top buttons on the top right, and those are going to go through how you are layering objects as you are designing. And we're also going to go through at the very bottom on the right, the transform history and navigator panels. So to get started, I'm just going to use my keyboard shortcut M in order to make a rectangle. I am going to turn the stroke off and change this color to, oh, that's a really bright blue. Um, I'm gonna go for a darker blue. And then I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut V to use the move or selection tool. And then I'm going to select a dark gray. And the reason I did that is so I can change the color for my next object without changing the original object color because it will change if you have it selected. So once again with M on my keyboard for the rectangle tool, I'm going to the top right and selecting the button on the left. And what this does, if I create a new rectangle, it will layer this new object behind that original rectangle. So if I go up to the very top and switch to the middle option, it now layers on top of the selections. So this is a really great way to have control over where your new objects or shapes are being placed as you're designing. It's also something that can be done with your layers panel or some keyboard shortcuts, which we'll go through in a later video. But for now, this is a great way to get started with layering your objects. That last button in that group when you use it just like I did it looks as if nothing is there although you know a shape is there because there's an outline. It looks as if there's no fill and no stroke then which is not the case. It's still that dark gray but what it has done, it has made like a clipping mask and it has cropped or clipped to that shape that we created. If I were to go in and change this to a lighter color, you can see exactly what it did. And like I said, it has created a clipping mask. So it is along the same shape as the object before it but you can tell your new shape is there because of the color difference. So I'm going to erase these using the ellipse tool. I'm just going to make a few circles as if I'm just creating a very, very simple pattern. So jumping down to the very bottom into your transform history and navigator panels, I'm actually going to start with the navigator because it is probably the easier one. Um, when you select it, you will notice it looks like a mini version of your artboard. And that is exactly what it is. So you can click on your minus or plus sign in order to enlarge your artboard or to zoom out. You can also use the slider to zoom in and out. And the one thing, if you have it zoomed in, you will notice that there now appears to be a gray rectangle. 
If you click on this rectangle, you can move around your artboard into the exact area that you would like. As an extra little tip, you can also use your space bar on your keyboard and a hand will appear. It's another way you can click with your mouse and move around your artboard. But you do have more control if you use your navigator. I'm going to hit Command and Zero to see my artboard fully again. Moving over to the History tab, it's exactly as what it says. It is a history of everything you have done so far in your document. So if you scroll down to the bottom, it's the very last thing that you did. You can click back a few if you want to step back. You can also use the slider and move as far back as you would like, all the way back to the very beginning of your document. It's kind of fun sometimes to go through and kind of use it as a time lapse to watch your entire design. And as another quick tip, if you are designing and you want to undo your last move, then you can use Command Z on your keyboard. If you went back too far, you can always step forward again by using Command, Shift, and Z. I would say those two are some of most, my most frequently used keyboard shortcuts. So the very last panel that we're going to go through is the Transform panel. If you have watched any of my videos on Skillshare or here on YouTube about creating patterns in Affinity Designer, you will have noticed that I've already went over the Transform panel. It's something you pretty much have to use if you're creating patterns. So if I select this object in the Transform panel, it's showing the X and Y axis. So it's showing exactly where that object is in my artboard. So it is 16.3 pixels in from the left and 42.9 pixels down from the top. It's also showing me the width and height of this object. So if I wanted to say, like change this to 70, it's really close. So I'm just gonna make it 70 pixels by 70 pixels. And maybe I want to move this ellipse over. It's at 16.3, I'm going to make it 20. So it's just a precise way of knowing how you want to move or how you should be moving certain things. So the next step, as you can see, we have two ellipses that are over the very edge of this artboard. And the rules with making a pattern is that if something is over the edge of the artboard, it has to be repeated on the opposite side for it to tile correctly. So I'm going to select this and always make sure to copy and paste. So Command C, Command V in your transform panel because this is on we're moving it on the x-axis. Go in and say plus whatever the width of your artboard is. So my artboard is, is a thousand, so I'm going to do a thousand pixels. And as you can see, it is now repeating on the opposite side exactly where it needs to be. Say we started with the ellipse on this side and we needed to move it to the left you would be doing it in a negative manner. So it would be minus a thousand instead of plus a thousand. So selecting this top one, we're going to our Y property and going plus 1000.
And as you can see, I forgot to copy and paste. So Command C, Command V, going into Y. Like I mentioned before, this time we're moving it in a negative fashion, so it needs to go minus 1,000 pixels. And you have, we have now made the beginning of a pattern. That is what I use the transform panel for the most. It's just simply moving objects so that I can create a pattern and that it will repeat the way that it needs to. So the very last things we're going to work with, I want to delete all of this. And I'm going to use the cloud tool. And the last ones on the transform panel you will see is an R and an S. The R is for rotate and the S is for skew. So I'm going to start with the S. Most of the time when you use this, you're going to click on this triangle and use the slider. And as you can see, it's literally just skewing it or distorting it to the left or the right. If you already know the degrees in which you want to do this, you can type it in. Like I said, most of the time when you use it, you're probably going to use the slider. This also applies for the rotate tool. If you already know how much you want to rotate it, you can type it in or you can just drop it down and use your slider. And you can rotate it by 180 degrees in either direction when you use the slider. So these go hand in hand so for, say you want to do a mock-up and you need something on an angle. You can use your skew and then your rotate to really get it to match up with your mock-up. You can also use it for your text. Say you're working on an image for a blog post or for a client and they need the text in line with something in an image. So you can use your rotate and skew in order to get the text to match up the way that is desired. So for example, just writing out a text I'm going to use the skew and you'll see how it is skewing to the left or right and then rotate it the way that you need to to line up with the project that you are working on. So I hope you enjoyed the second part in this series. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thanks again, guys.